the world's longest sea crossing has divided the internet. If you don't know what we're talking about, it's the Hong Kong Zhuhai Bridge. Whenever something happens to be the world's biggest anything, there's bound to be some pushback. Today, we'll decide whether the world's largest sea crossing is an engineering success or a waste of time, effort, and money. The 34-mile bridge connects Hong Kong with Macau and Zhuhai in China. Ever since Hong Kong and Macau, two previous colonies of Britain and Portugal respectively, were returned to China, there was a need to connect these two with mainland China. This was done to drive economic growth and socially integrate them with mainstream China. The bridge has dramatically reduced travel time between Hong Kong and Zhuhai from 4 hours to 40 minutes on the road. These three locations, otherwise separated by water, are geographically close. By utilizing the sea route, China made a much more direct and fast connection between these three regions. It's similar to what the Fermarn Undersea Tunnel is about. By establishing a tunnel between Denmark and Germany, the travel time has been significantly reduced between the two nations. We've created a video about it, so if you're interested, do check it out. If you've enjoyed the video so far, make sure to subscribe to our channel. We're releasing two new videos each week. Zhuhai is a major port city on the Pearl River Delta in China. Sometimes referred to as the Greater Bay Area, it's one of the most densely populated areas of the region, but it's still one of the most urbanized and richest regions in South China. By cutting down travel time and hence the transportation costs, the commerce and especially the logistics industries will greatly benefit from it. It's great for Hong Kong too as it solidifies its position in the trade and tourism sector. This has created a one-hour living circle in the Pearl Delta region. Let's walk through the general plan of the bridge. It consists of three cable stayed bridges, an undersea tunnel, and four artificial islands. The bridge is designed to last 120 years and cost 127 billion yuan or 19 billion US dollars to build. The 34-mile bridge consists of three sections. The main bridge spanning up to 14 miles or 23 kilometers, the undersea tunnel, and the Hong Kong Link Road. The main bridge is the largest part of the whole project. It starts with the Zhuhai Macau Artificial Island Port, which houses the boundary crossing facilities for both China and Macau. Needless to say, it's a breathtaking structure with a white, almost circular roof. The Artificial Island Port creates a political, economic, and cultural link between the three cities. The bridge construction consumed 400,000 tons of steel, enough to build 60 Eiffel Towers, while 300,000 cubic meters of concrete was utilized. The main bridge ends at the sea tunnel. The tunnel is created to provide a pathway for the ships to pass to not hinder the sea trade because of the bridge. Alternatively, ships can also pass underneath the cable state bridges. The tunnel is set at a depth of 146 feet and is 4.2 miles in length. It's an immersed tube tunnel, which means that the tunnel elements will be built on land and subsequently lowered into the sea. On both ends of the tunnel, there are two artificial islands, the Blue Dolphin Island on the west and the White Dolphin Island on the east. The road traffic enters the immersed tunnel through the first portal, which is the artificial island. Once it emerges above ground through the second island, that's where Hong Kong's link road starts. The bridge is not served by public transport, so private shuttle buses will run along the route. The shuttle service, also known as the Golden Buses, will run 24 hours of the day with bus departures every five minutes. One of the criticisms of the project is that there's no rail link. Imagine the biggest sea crossing in the world not having a rail link, which could have made travel even faster. Compared to the Orson Bridge between Denmark and Sweden, which is a combined railway and road bridge, two tracks are reserved for rail and four lanes for road traffic, making Orson the longest combined road and railway bridge in the world. The Hong Kong Road Link is a 7.4-mile dual three-lane carriageway connecting the main bridge and the port. The Hong Kong port is located on a piece of reclaimed land consisting of approximately 150 hectares. Inside the port, there's an Aesthetic Passenger Clearance Building PCB. Its purpose is to oversee vehicle clearance plazas and public transport interchanges at the Hong Kong port. Its curved roof represents the sea waves and offers unobstructed views. Its skylights filter natural light to minimize power usage for the whole building. Tree-like columns support the roof and provide an airy feel inside. Because of the project's proximity to the airport, there was a height restriction for the roof. For this reason, a total of 81 prefabricated roof segments were completed off-site and then connected together. The roof stretched up to the size of 9 FIFA football pitches. Different types of plants were used to provide greenery and color in different patterns covering over 30% of the Hong Kong port. On one hand, this project seems to ease the burden of daily commuters like truck drivers, etc., 
who have to drive hours and hours and pay hefty tolls. On the other hand, getting a permit to pass this bridge is not easy. Those who want to cross the bridge must obtain special permits allocated by a quota system, and all vehicles will pay a toll, albeit lower than the expressway. In a bid to solve its traffic congestion issues, the Hong Kong government imposes significant fees, taxes, and administrative paperwork on private vehicles. This ultimately means that driving a car on the Hong kong Zhuhai Bridge would incur the same restrictions as the current cross-border traffic. The required documents include driver's license for both Hong Kong and mainland China, a Hong Kong closed road permit for cross-boundary vehicles, and an approval notice from the Guangdong Public Security Bureau. This document hunt might take two weeks, so if you plan to go to Hong Kong through this bridge, better plan in advance. Vehicle owners also need to ensure they have the appropriate insurance coverage for the regions they're traveling to. By the end of 2017, only 10,000 permits were issued for private vehicles to drive across the bridge from Hong Kong to Zhuhai. Macau is also dealing with road congestion problems and allows a small quota of 300 vehicles to enter directly. Moreover, visitors are encouraged to park their cars behind and travel using the public transport system to lower the number of cars on the roads. The lengthy paperwork has led to some people calling the project a white elephant and a waste of taxpayers' money. The creation of the artificial islands also posed a challenge in an area with strong currents. Instead of reclaiming the land in the traditional way, which is by dumping heavy rock and cement, the constructors tried a different approach. They anchored circular steel piles in the mud and filled it with inert material to form the base of the island. There were reports of a 66-foot drift on the reclaimed land housed in the Hong Kong Border Facility building. Officials dismissed these reports, but admitted that parts of the reclaimed land had moved up to 6 or 7 meters. According to them, this movement was expected and the safety of the structure wasn't jeopardized. This incident delayed the project, and whenever a mega-project gets delayed, there's a cost overrun. By 2017, the main bridge portion had a cost overrun of 10 billion yuan that was blamed on increased labor and material costs, as well as changes to the design schemes. Another controversy was the lack of worker safety on site. Nine fatalities were reported on the Chinese side, while more than 10 deaths were reported on the Hong Kong side of the project. In addition, 200 to 600 were reported injured depending on the source. There isn't much accurate information as to how many died on the Chinese side, so there is a possibility that number could be higher. That's not all. In 2017, Hong Kong's Independent Commission Against Corruption ICAC arrested 21 employees, including lab technicians and senior executives, for fake safety testing. Apparently, the bridge's concrete was being tested and the arrested individuals falsified the test report. This raised serious questions regarding the integrity of the bridge and the artificial islands as well. Hong Kong's highway departments conducted new tests after this controversy and found that the bridge meets the safety standards. Furthermore, all the heavy land reclamation and construction had a serious impact on marine life. WWF Hong Kong blamed the bridge's construction for the falling number of white dolphins in the waters. The population of white dolphins had dropped by a drastic 60% due to this megaproject. According to WWF, the number of dolphins seen in Hong Kong waters has decreased from 148 to 47 in the past 10 years, and they are now absent from the waters near the bridge. Given the billions of dollars already spent on the bridge, officials are hopeful they'll receive back their investment. Chinese officials say it'll generate up to 10 trillion yuan or $1.44 trillion for the economy. According to an estimate by BBC Chinese, the bridge will only earn around 86 million in tolls per year. However, the bridge's high maintenance cost will take a third of this figure. What do you think of the Hong Kong-China Bridge? Does it serve a practical purpose or is it just symbolically created to connect Hong Kong and China? Share your thoughts in the comments. If you liked today's video, show your support by hitting the like button and subscribing to our channel. We are committed to releasing two weekly videos, so stay tuned for our next upload.